G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Learn to Paint TV and Learn to Paint Academy. Welcome to another exciting episode of Learn to Paint TV this week. This week we're going to do another one of my plein air studies from my 30 day plein air painting challenge. So this one I did of a farmhouse on a hill and it's got mountain injury in the background. So this is a very well known landmark on the Sunshine Coast. Okay, so step one of the more method is going to be getting our drawing roughed in first, get those big shapes in the right spots on the canvas. And to do that, I'm going to use ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson as our drawing color, just with a bit of water. And today I thought I might use a fan brush. Um, you can see it's a well-worn fan brush, this one. And I'll just dip that in some water. And just, we want nice loose paint here for our drawing purposes. Um, but yeah, I'll just, Use the fan brush just for something different. Okay, get plenty of water in there. So we've got a nice loose um, mix there. Now there's a few different layers in this painting. I think the most important thing to get in here initially is the shape and location of uh, Mountain Indri. So it runs around somewhere like that. Now this is from a different angle to what most artists, Whoop, that's a bit too high. That needs to run down to about there. Yeah, it's a different angle from what most artists who have painted this scene um, will paint, because most of them will paint it from uh, further around the corner, um, which is the well-known sort of landmark view of it. Uh, I was fortunate enough to stumble across this particular aspect of it um, when I was out looking at another subject, which was the Maruchi River, and um, I came around a bend and got this great view of the farmhouse right in front of Mount Indri. I thought, well, I've got to, got to stop and paint that, right? So um, that's our main shape. Getting that in the right spot, right location, and the right sort of shape on that is uh, our first step. And there's another little rise in through there. There's a bit of a background mountain there. It's all catching the morning light, which is nice. And then we have uh, the middle distance hillside, which it runs up to say there and that's where we're going to have our little farmhouse and so on there and we then have another bit of this foreground hill and we'll run that more than halfway so that's about halfway there we'll just run that past that halfway mark somewhere around there don't have to get that exact it's um nobody's going to get out of ruler and measure that so that gives us our main directional lines there's a couple of tree lines that we need to get in. So here in the foothills of this mountain injury, we've got our main tree there. And uh, oops, that needs to come up just a touch higher. Got our main trees in here. Okay, that, that canvas has got a little bit loose, so it's got a little bit of an indentation there. Don't worry about that. We'll work around it. Okay, a bit more paint. So this main tree sort of sits up there and it overlaps that ridge line there, which is good. And then we've got some more. So this is, just keep it rough at this stage. Okay, middle distance tree is there. Remember, we're just searching for placement at the moment. And then we've got this one that is going to sit above that line. So it breaks up that line quite nicely. So it's an important component of this painting is that uh, is that that tree there, okay? And then it runs down that way. Okay, let's move on to step two now, the more method of painting, which is now going to be about blocking in our big shapes. This is where we use our big brushes, and we start off finding our darks, and then we work backwards with our layers. And we're going to use an approach that sort of traditional oil painters would use. They usually start off with their darks and then layer mid-tones and then layer highlights over that, which is what we do, only we're using acrylics to do that. Our darkest darks is going to be this tree line here, right? That's going to be our darkest tone in the painting, I would say, at this stage. So to get that in, we'll just take our blue and our red, okay? It's a middle distance dark, so... Um, I think the blue and the red will do us nicely. I won't add any white to this mix at this stage. And let's just see how that ends up. Okay. Now, you could have blocked this in when we had the fan brush out before, and you would have, you know, you would have had done a, 
you would have got pretty close to what we needed anyway, put it that way. Um, so as you progress, you'll start to understand that I could have just blocked all that in straight away. I didn't need to draw it out first, but for the purpose of demonstrating to people who are maybe just starting out, it's useful to see how we get our drawing in and then how we um, come and block that in. When I'm painting for myself, I, you know, I would have just gone straight to the block in here. We, we learn more, get more confidence, and uh, things become easier. That's the beauty of learning to paint. The more you learn new skills, take courses, like you can go over to the Learn to Paint Academy and take all of our courses, like our color mixing course and so on, and the more you learn, the easier everything becomes. And the practice, of course, you need to practice. So that's why a lot of people join our Learn to Paint Club is because every week they get a new project to practice, which is the full length version of the Learn to Paint TV show that you're watching right now. Okay, so we'll run that along. And that little farmhouse then is gonna sit just nicely against those darks. It's going to be a lighter value and it will pop out against those darks, right? So it's nice to have that dark backdrop in there. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna move one layer back to this more distant hillside here. We don't want it the same value. We don't want it as dark as that. We also don't want it the same temperature. There's a lot of red in here. So we need to cool it down a little bit because cool colors go back, warm colors come forward into the foreground. So we need to cool it and we need to lighten the value and we need to gray it just a little bit as well. So we can take the blue here, mix it into what we already had. And that's too blue. Okay, so that's too cool. So we'll take whatever red I can find there and just mix that in as well. Okay, probably need a little bit more red. And then I'll take just a touch of the white. Okay. And if it starts to go a little bit too mauvey, I could add a little pinhead of the yellow just to gray it back a bit. Now, if I pop that next to there and do a test, there's a definite shift between those two, but it's not enough. I want these trees to pop out against the distant mountain. So I'm going to take a little bit more white and mix that in. Now it's looking a little bit too purpley, too mauvey. Let's just pop that there. But you can see that that's a lot lighter now and gives us definite separation. What I want to do is just cool it back just a little and gray it a little with the yellow. Okay, and I think that's going to be a better tone for us right there. And then I'll just start blocking that in and all the time just checking it against the tone that we've put in against the trees. Is, are the trees popping enough out of there? I think they are. This is gonna dry a little bit darker, but when I put warm highlights on those trees around the edges of those trees, I think we might be right with it. Okay. So we'll just block that in there. So a little bit of white canvas showing through, but this stage I don't care because we'll can attend we can fix that up, you know, when we um when we get to the highlighting and details section. Okay. There we go. Now I am thinking it's a little dark when that, when that dries. It's it's going to be it's going to be a little dark, but I won't change it until I see the effect of having some highlights on there. But what I will do is now I'll go bluer and I'll go lighter in value. Okay, and I don't want to go super light because then I won't have anything to put against my sky. But you can see that that tone there. If I compare that too close, right? There's not enough separation there. I'd like that just to be a little bit lighter. Okay, as we have taken too much white there. So that's okay, I'll add a bit more blue. Okay. And you can see I've, I've got this build up of paint in the edge of the brush there. So what I'm doing is I'm 
I don't want to lose that paint. I'll just see if I can swipe that out and then I can mix that in. And that just brings it up to a tone that's probably a bit better. There we go. I think that's going to work a bit better for us. So we'll just mold the top of the mountain injury there. And what we want to do is create some nice atmosphere in this background area because we've got this rising sun in the morning and it was beautiful, you know, it was so fantastic to be able to get out on location and, and paint. Um, that around that's a pretty strong tone right there I had a little bit of yellow because I don't want it to be too red it has to be an earthy feel underneath there and I'll add a little bit of white just to bring it back a little bit notice I've got plenty of paint there because I've got this big area here which we're just going to block that in so keep in mind we're at step two now the more method and our goal here is just to block in these big shapes getting our values and our shapes right. That's really all we're doing in step two. Just making sure like this warmth of this grass is gonna bring it all forward. And then we, we go back to this cooler tone here, which is our next dark. And then we, we step progressively back, which is gonna help us create a sense of atmosphere and depth into the painting, okay? So we're not looking to do any details or anything at this stage. And uh, don't get hard edges along there. I'm just softening those up into that dark. We don't want any hard edges there that's going to draw the eye. Okay, I'll probably run out of paint there now. But we've got to be careful when we are working with yellow and blue, we don't get it too green. That's a challenge that a lot of people have. So let me show you how you do that. We'll get all that blue and white. Sorry, that yellow and white, we'll mix those together. Okay, like so. So we've got tons of paint up there, and then let's just paint in that sunlight tone. Now I've got to work fast here because it's going to dry super quick. Notice I'm being a little bit rough. I've lost an edge there. I'm not going to fuss about that at the moment. Okay, so it's there. Now what I'll do is I'll pull, I won't wash the brush, I'll pull some of that paint out. So it's still yellow in there, um, but I won't fuss about cleaning it. Get some fresh white up there now. So I can't afford to dilly dally while that's starting to set and dry off. I need to move fast. So let's get our blue. And let's get our white. Okay, I'll just join those together like so. Okay, and I'll start up here and I won't come in and connect the two yet. I'll just paint up to it. You may have seen me do this in other videos, uh, but what I find it's easier just to get the blue down, come right up to the edge of that sunlight tone. A little bit of care around these edges. And keep nice big brush marks. Don't be timid with your brush marks. That's why I like big brushes, big bold marks. It gives it a nice sense of movement and uh, you know, quite an impressionistic feel to it. 
some people like their paintings to be all up, you know, tight and controlled. That's not kind of how I like to paint, which is why we do it the way we do it here. Okay, now what we're going to need to do is just start to bring these areas together. Try not to use too much pressure, but I'll scrub it around. If you use too much pressure, then you're going to blend the colours a little bit too much. Now, if I just scrub it around, especially where I've got that white canvas there, if I scrub it around, then it's going to integrate. Now, I'm pulling some of that yellow up into the sky a bit higher there. Um, without it becoming without the colors mixing too much. Okay, they're going to mix a little bit, but not too much. Okay, pull that yellow up. That should settle down okay, so I'll just pull some paint out of that brush. So our next step then is to really find a highlight tone for this distant uh, mountain here, which is Mount Nindri. The way we're going to do that is we're going to find the overall tone. So we know it's blue and red, but it's more on the blue side, so I'll put more blue into that mix. But it's not that strong, so we know we need to add white to it. And that's a little bit purpley. Because once we find that tone, we can then create our highlights. So I'll just add a little bit more blue into that mix. Okay, and that's looking closer to it. It's maybe just a touch lighter than that. Okay, and remember that we really need to go a shade lighter than what we have up on there because it clicks will dry just that shade lighter. But let me just test that. And you can see that that's pretty much the identical color that I've already got up there. Okay, so that's good. We've managed to get it just right. I mean, it's never gonna be 100% identical, but it's close enough that if I put paint up there, you're not seeing it probably on the video. It's disappearing into the color that's already there, which in fact tells me that I'm probably a shade too dark with that mix, but that's okay. Because what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to lighten it. So to find our highlight, we get back to our original tone, then we lighten it with white, and then we warm it with a little bit of yellow and red. And we just mix that on the edge because what we wanna do is get the contrast between the shadow color and this color, but we need to bring that shadow color into it. There we go, that's looking right. Now it's never gonna quite look ideal up on the, you know, the white of the palette there. It's not until you actually bring it onto the painting that you can tell whether you've got it right. So here's what I always do, I always mix what I think is right just by comparison. And then I take a little bit of paint, not too much, you only want to tie a little bit of paint for our highlights here. And let me just, bring that in and just see, you know, like, is that going to work? And I think that's going to work nicely. It's complementing against the, um, against the morning light. Now, there's a little bit of a shadow effect in here. So what I want to do is just bring that down like so. Just a tiniest little bit of paint here is what we're after. Okay, so we just... And what this is, is just the morning light, that sunlight bathing across the valley here, as it clips on to the tops of uh, the tops of the treetops there, okay? So there's obviously a ridge along there, which is why we're getting light there, but not everywhere. In fact, that comes more down there. Okay, so that's all getting sunlight in there. And notice I'm a very light touch here. Very light. This is in the distance. So we don't need to detail this up. Okay. Now I'll put a mark there. So I'm fortunate that I've got some tone mix there. I'm just going to go slightly darker because I think in this shadow area here, it should probably be just a tad darker, not too much. Like so. And I think that perhaps I should extend that dark down through there. Something like that. 
we'll come back and readdress it. Um, there's maybe just a, a little bit that's running an angle through there. Just pull that back a little. Okay. There is some rocky escarpment there. So what I'll do is I'll just mix up a little orangey tone. A little bit more yellow in there. I need to whiten that, so lighten that off. Like so. Now that's too light. If I put that up there, that'll be too light. So what I'll do is I'll take some of the shadow tone and we'll just, we'll just tone it back to that. And then I'll clean this brush and just pull the tip through. So you, you probably can't even see any paint on there, but I just pulled that very little tip through and I'm just going to paint in here. Just a little bit of this rocky face that's catching into that light. Okay. From further around where most artists would paint this, you know, the, these uh, rocky escarpments really light up. Okay, so I think that's all working. Just need to let that settle down a little bit and then we'll reassess it. Now, this mountain here, we did, we'll do the same thing. We'll go our blue and our red and we'll, we'll work on getting back to that same tone. Okay, it needs some white in there, not as much. Okay, and you can see if I pop that up there, you can see that's too light. Even when that dries, it's going to be too light. So what that tells me is I need a little bit more blue and a little bit more red. Okay. That's, and if I look at that, that's closer to red than it is to blue. And really what we want is it to be closer to blue than red. Okay. So now if I look at that, pop that next to the other mark I made, you can't really see this mark because it's fairly close. It's still a little bit too red. So I'll get a little touch more blue in there. And if I pop that up there now, you can see that's pretty much what we're after. Okay, so I'll just paint a little bit of that in. I'll just re-establish that line there that I lost earlier. Fill in a couple of the spots that have got too much white canvas showing through. And so on. Okay, so what we need to do now is get a highlight colour. We need to go a little bit greener, so I'm going to add in more yellow and more white into that mix. Okay. We'll get a little bit more blue into that. And that could be close, that could be close. Let's have a little look. Again, we're not painting treetops, we're just painting the effect of light catching on the tops of treetops and what we want is we want it to be warmer than and, and stronger in value than the uh, the back row because that back row further away right so let's just run that in and just but again we don't want to be detailing this up too much because it's too far away but we want that same color combination of time with that sunlight that's catching uh, through the valley, that morning light, which I think we've pretty well got that there. Now let's not put it everywhere. It's obviously catching along the tops there. It's going to catch into there. You can just put a few little silhouetted Tops of trees there, not too many. Is that that's our our um, distant highlight, and this is our mid dis middle distance highlight, and there's quite a big difference between the two. So let's just see if we can establish some shapes here that are. Now I think that's probably a little bit khaki in tone. So I'm going to add a little bit of this yellow to it and I'm just going to just see if we can't 
get a nicer tone in there especially as that's all going to be getting that morning light okay So it's all about getting that shape in now of the clumps of foliage here and understanding where will that light be catching most. Okay, I do think we need to go a little bit greener with this. I won't change that one, I'll keep that one at that sort of tone. But let's just get in some mid-tone greens in here. Just for a bit of variety and to break that up. Ooh, now we're going to have our farms in there, so I'll, I won't get too involved in there just yet. going to downplay the importance of these um, two buildings here because I want this to be more about the overall landscape than the farm buildings here. However they are there and then they're, they're an important part obviously of this landscape. Well, I don't want them to be everything if that makes sense. Okay now the other one might even take that tone there and let's just see if we can't get that in right about there okay that's gonna run up that way down that way farm shed there like that so in order to get that in I'll use my little palette knife here and pick up some of this white and run that in there a terrible job but I'll fix that in one second and the way I'll fix that of course is to take that tone there and we'll just straighten up that line there that line there Line there. Take some of this white. So this is obviously a white tin roof that's reflecting plenty of sunlight in there. Yeah, I'll use my palette knife for something different. We'll go yellow, and we'll go blue, and we'll go a little bit of this yellow ochre, a little bit of that red. We'll just mix it around and see what we end up with we should have a reasonably somewhat bright but a little muted green which we have okay and then i'll scrape through now i've got tons of paint on there uh, because i've got a big area here to cover and what i'm going to do is just start to just build up that grassy area and i'm using a palette knife because i can then just yeah, when you apply it, it's the canvas of the or the tooth of the canvas is going to pull it off in different ways it'll create some interesting effects I don't want to lose all the earth tone underneath though. Run it across there. So in parts I will leave that um, earth tone showing through here and there. 
just a little bit of gap there. And see how I can just scrape it back and that then breaks up the paint a little bit and creates some interesting effects and textures as well. So let's continue. You can see why you need plenty of paint here. I've got a little bit of blue in there, so it's just getting a little bit darker as we come down. And I want to create that ridge line through there as well, so I need to keep that in mind. Let's get some more of this paint happening. So now I want to get a brighter green in through there. So I'll go the blue and I'll go a lot more of the CAD yellow light here. Lots of paint there, and I'm just going to run that down there to indicate that there's a change in the topography. It's probably a little, little bright. That's okay. We'll just get a little bit more yellow ochre, a little bit more red, more of that blue. Mix that all around. And let's just work some of that in. I'll keep the edge of it there along there. We'll keep that fairly bright, but then as we come down in here, we'll just shift it, get a little bit of that in there. You can see it's getting some really nice random effects, and we just keep playing around with it until we get it something like we want it to be. And uh, I'd love to see you have a go at this one. It's got some really nice elements to it. It's got this landmark feature here. We've got this rising sun. Um, we've got different layers of depth and our mid-tone darks. And we've got these really nice punchy highlights on the roofs of the buildings and the grasses here. And uh, I think it's definitely one to have a go at and, and see how you go with it. And I'd love to see how you go with it as well. So please uh, you know, get in contact and let me know how you've gone with it, as, as with every episode of Learn to Paint TV. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. Now, if you want to find out more, uh, then check out all of the episodes of Learn to Paint TV at www.learntopaint.tv. I'll put the address underneath me here. And if you want a free course where I go into these ideas and these principles of the more method in a lot more detail, then go and register for our free course at www.learntopaint.academy and click on the free course button that you'll find on the page there. Enroll yourself for free and take our free course and, and I'll go into it in more detail and there's other projects there that you can work your way through and then you'll see all of the other courses that we offer at the Learn to Paint Academy. So, hope you've enjoyed this episode. Oh, by the way, if you want to see the full length version of this, this is Painting's probably taken me an hour and a half to do, but we've edited it down to 20 minutes or so. If you want to see the full length, then join the Learn to Paint Club. You can join for $1 trial and get access to more than 60 or 70 full length projects in there right now. So go to learntopaint.club to check out the Learn to Paint Club. My name's Rod Moore. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.